The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm David, and I'm going to be building a headless TV recorder with the official Raspberry Pi TV hat. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. My smart TV is essentially great. It's got every app I can think of built in. It's got Chromecast built in. It's got DLNA media streaming. It's got even TV recording to a USB hard drive if you plug it in. But that's where my issue with it starts. Because it's only got one tuner, that means you can't record something while you're watching something else. Now, it doesn't come up that often, but when it does, you get this really annoying box letting you know that it can only show one thing at once, and sooner or later, it's going to change the channel on you. Needless to say, that's quite annoying, and it's the only real pitfall I think I have with my TV. So that's where we step in with the Raspberry Pi TV hat. The Raspberry Pi TV hat is an official Raspberry Pi product. Uh, it's not an international project. It only works with DVB, T and T2 broadcasts. I hope you guys know where that is. I know it works for me in the UK, but it doesn't work everywhere. This project will work with other USB tuners, but for me, the official Raspberry Pi is where I wanted to go. It's a great little product. It comes uh, in the standard form that you'd expect to go on a Raspberry Pi. Just a little antenna jack that plugs in as an adapter here, because obviously that's far too big to fit on the board as it is, and a few little risers so you can plug it straight into the uh, Raspberry Pi. This works with, I think it's a Raspberry Pi two and upwards, so it even works with Raspberry Pi Zero, so you can imagine how small a form factor TV receiver you can build if you really needed to. The other aspect of this project is I want it to be totally headless. I want to build this, stick it in a cupboard and forget it's there. I don't want to see it, I have no physical interaction with it. I just want it there to schedule a recording when I need it to, record it to somewhere where we can then stream the media back onto our telly, probably using DLNA uh, media serving. For that to work, we've got to set it up in a very particular way. And I also want to make it quite a robust solution because I want it to be a permanent fixture. So with that in mind, I'm, I've am i got in mind to put this in sort of a, a commercial box with proper plugs and sockets so it's serviceable, make sure it's electrically safe so we can install it and sort of walk away. Uh, but I also want to make sure that it's got the right software on it. We're going to be using TV head end uh, which is a great web-based interface for the Raspberry Pi and it works with the Raspberry Pi official hat as well as other USB tuners to uh, control that recording, scheduling and tuning of things. And uh, then we'll set up the Raspberry Pi with the ability to save it to my NAS because I don't want to be uh, recording media to the SD card in this all the time. I, I want it to go to my resilient hard drive that's backed up and running all the time anyway and that that's where we stream media from so it makes sense to save everything there but that's going to take a bit of configuration on the Pi once we get there okay so the parts i've pulled together that i think i'm going to need for this project uh start with the obvious and the basics i've got a power supply raspberry pi and the raspberry pi tv hat that, that should hopefully be obvious why i need all of those parts the bits that where i, I sort of go from my own personal sense of calm on these is I've got what is actually a, a normal data outlet here which can be mounted on the side of the box so you can just plug an Ethernet lead in and out to the box you don't have glands or anything which I'm trying to steer clear of. Um, I've printed some little uh, sort of off stand screws to raise things off the back of the box and allow me to screw into. Um, I've also got this little adapter. Now this is an F-type connector and this is an MMCX connector which is what the Raspberry Pi uh, TV hat uses so you can plug that straight in there. But I've also got an adapter so that I can fit the UK TV which uh, has a really obscure name and everyone seems to call it something different 
uh, I think the most common name is the PAL TV antenna connection, uh, but there's also a brand name that's associated with it. And the reason I've gone for this adapter is because this can then have a hole drilled and it's got a locking ring so I can actually panel mount this so it's just this penetrating through the side of the box. Um, I've also gone way over the top and actually gone for an IEC C14 inlet. Um, and this is actually a fused version so I can pop a little quick blow fuse in here uh, and know that it doesn't matter what lead you pick up, the, the power supply is always going to be protected. Um, I've got a 650 milliamp incoming fuse, that's just tons at 230 volts, it's going to give me what about 150 watts ish. Uh, I need about five to run this project so I, I think we're going to be pretty quilly on that. Of course micro SD card and power from the USB for the Raspberry Pi, uh, I'm just going to be soldering that direct into the power supply. Yeah I think that sounds like a plan. Perfect. I don't know how many people would have used one of these before. It's an IDC punch. Um, it punches down the terminal onto the terminals. These are insulation displacement connectors, IDC. Um, and this punches down and also using this little bit actually snips off the excess wire. So all you have to do is I have to admit, this, this tool in particular is so old, it, it's uh, a little bit chowed up and actually the dies are a little bit bent. Probably do be getting a new one. Let's get the Raspberry Pi on some screws and stands and we'll get to the software. There you go. So theory goes, other than putting the SD card in once we flashed it with the appropriate software, that's it. All the connections I need are external to the box. Nice and safe, it's fused, it's got an earth connection for a bit of lightning protection-ish. Um, nice, neat box. <laughs> so let's have a bit of a tidy up and get to some software. Now for the boring bit, the software. Now the first obvious thing you've got to do is set up your Raspberry Pi image. You start with Raspberry and it's nice and easy. There's nothing wrong with it, it'll work absolutely fine in this application. Now while that's flashing, there are two text files we need to set up. The first is just an empty text file called SSH. So if we do new text document, just call it SSH, that's done. That means when the Raspberry Pi boots for the first time, it looks for that text file. And if it's there, automatically enables SSH access. You don't need a keyboard and video plugged in to go through the options to, to enable SSH. So we never need to plug keyboard and uh, display into this. Makes life a lot easier. Now, obviously I'm intending long-term to use this on the Ethernet, but for the sake of setting this up for this project, I'm gonna set it up with Wi-Fi. Now to set that up headless, you need a file called WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. Catchy, I know. And the contents of this file is really short and it just says network and you put in your network name and your Wi-Fi pass key in here. And again, when it boots for the first time, it will connect to your wireless network. No additional config required. I'll attach both these files over in the Element 14 community. It's a lot easier to have a copy to start with than it is to try and copy it from my dodgy tutorials. There we go, so that's ready. Now those two text files, before first boot, need to be dropped in the boot directory. And that's it. Our mounting drive and we're ready to go. Now, just for safety, we'll pop the lid on and cross your fingers. Um, of course, joking, I've tested insulation resistance and everything and the appropriate outputs before I plugged it into the Raspberry Pi. So this should just boot. Now, of course, the first boot to the Raspberry Pi, the operating system takes a little while to set up, so don't get too excited. It's just gonna take a while. I actually should have said, I've experimented with this setup a little bit before, and I've had this attached to Wi-Fi, and I didn't find the recording stability fantastic. When I had it attached using a wired network, I found the recording stability perfect when recording to a network location. Whether you're going to do that or not, I don't know but just a heads up, 
you can probably assume that it's going to be called Raspberry Pi. So in putty, if we go Raspberry Pi, helps if you spell Pi correctly, yes, and default password and default username. First thing you do every time, always change the password from your default password. Must do that. If you do no other steps, do that one, <laughs> please. Karen Corbiel, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Now the next thing is to set up TV head end. So all we have to do is sudo apt get install TV head end. Be careful at this step. I actually messed this up the first time I did it and accidentally put the password in thinking that's what it was asking for. And it made for a very awkward conversation when trying to distinguish between the username and the password. Choose a username for the TV head end administrator. I'm gonna go creative here and go admin. I know the security implications. I'm not intending to expose this to the internet anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. After the installation, the TV head end can be accessed via HTTP port on 9981. Okay. Now, just for good measure, after the installation, I'd suggest rebooting the, the um, Raspberry Pi. In my case, because I actually don't have an antenna inlet anywhere near here, I'm actually gonna to have to go put the box somewhere else. And we'll carry on the software installation using the network. Before we carry on with the configuration of TV head end through the web interface, there's one last change I actually wanna to make to Raspberry Pi. And this is actually like mapping a network drive. So I can set that path up as the record location for TV head end. And where that location is actually gonna reside is on my NAS, my network addressable storage. So that location is where we store loads of media in the house that can then be streamed to the telly. So to do that, let's go back to Putty and we're gonna launch Raspberry Pi again. Fortunately, it has booted up and connected to the Wi-Fi. And next up, we need to go to CD slash media. Excellent. I'm gonna create a new directory and call it recorded. So that has now created a folder in the media directory called recorded. Now the next command is the one that actually tells it to treat that folder you've just created as a network location and this is using something called SIFS. In my case uh, it's to my network addressable server. Uh, for whatever reason it doesn't seem to like the domain name so I'm using the local IP address instead. So this instruction says with elevated permissions, mount a SIFS share, which is the same as like a Windows share and network folder. Uh, there is the location on my server. Here is the location on my local machine. And here are some options. The first one is the username, second one password. File mode is 777 and directory mode. So when you mount that directory, it tells it to treat it as though it's got read write access. If you don't specify those, you'll be able to mount it and read from it, but you can't record any media there, in which case, no good to us. So there we go, let's execute that. So you see that now in Putty, we've got a green recorded file. If we CD recorded and list the contents, you can see a couple of video files that have been recorded when I've previously been experimenting. So with that done, we need to get to a browser and connect to our installation. Still using the extension Raspberry Pi, the DNS name Raspberry Pi, using port 9981. Remember the password and username we set up during the installation. Here we go. This is TV head end. So this website is now running locally on the Raspberry Pi and we can get to start to configure everything we need. Okay, what we need to just confirm, we're happy with everything. We can leave all of this blank. Don't need to worry about that. We've already set a an admin username. We don't mind because we aren't allowing internet access to this. We're not opening up any ports in our firewall. 
so none of that matters. And user login, I don't mind anybody on my network viewing TV streamed from the Raspberry Pi. Network one, we can configure an IP TV network if we want to. Uh, the main thing here is the Sony CXD2800, which is the Raspberry Pi tuner, which is fantastic, it's detected it. Now your MUX is your local TV broadcasting sort of setup. So mine is gonna be all the way down in UK and then my local TV broadcast. Where have you mind where I live? And now, TV head end is hopefully going to scan for all those channels. D don't, don't get excited, this is not a quick process. Okay, so it's found 143 TV channels or services. Some of those will be digital radio, which for whatever reason is broadcast in a similar sort of system in the UK. There you go, and it's also downloaded all of the TV channels, so... Yes, yes, and yes, I guess. Why not? Finish. Right. So as a general rule, that's it done. The only last step we want to configure, go into config and then recordings. In here, we can set the location that we want it to save files. So recording system path. So we're going to change that to slope stroke media stroke re recorded and after that everything it records will be saved to our network's SIF location that we set up earlier. Other than that all the configuration is kind of uh, optional, it's your own choice. Just you see up here <laughs> um, the storage space available in our recorded location is uh, 1.4 terabytes. Obviously I don't have that available on my Raspberry Pi, that's, that's the space available on my network location. So that chain, config change to saving the network location has worked. Oh, classic Schwarzenegger. So I've just asked that to start recording. I'm recording this over Wi-Fi. I didn't actually plug it in and disable the Wi-Fi, so I'm not really expecting this to work in, impeccably, but should at least record something just to demonstrate that it works. So three meg, five meg, six meg. And if we stop, it'll ask, do you want to gracefully stop the recording? Which means it'll properly close the file down and actually enable it to be played. And there you go. There's the recorded video. Just one final word on config for your recording setup please make sure you follow local copyright rules in your country. In the UK, you're allowed to make personal video recordings of TV programs aired and keep them for seven days. After that, you should delete them. Check out your local laws, please stick to them. Well, I, I, I have to say I've set out to achieve what I wanted to. The Raspberry Pi TV hat is a great TV tuner, actually. I've had better luck with this than I have any sort of USB tuner I've ever used in the past for other operating systems. Uh, I'm really pleased with the box. Previous projects I've done like this have ended up a bit, uh, let's call them messy, but this one I, I'm super pleased with. Now the final, the final thing I want to add about TV Head End as a platform is there is a range of uh, mobile phone apps that you can set up and use to schedule and program recordings, which is absolutely perfect. You can be there on your phone, schedule a recording, and it'll just record in the background. You don't need to go to a laptop, open the web interface, or go through any of the config. It's much easier in the, uh, in the app layout. And TV Head End with the Raspberry Pi hat is a great combination. And this is just what I need to make sure my TV is perfect and I can carry on using all the modern apps I want. I hope you've enjoyed this build and uh, if you'd like to ask any questions or get in touch, head over to the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash. Oh, nearly said the electronics inside. Don't go to the, well no, do go to the electronics inside, it's great. Um, no, but seriously, go over to electronic, <laughs> If you have any questions or follow up or you'd like to ask, you can get in touch with me over at element14.com forward slash element14presents. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. It's neat. Look at it. Headless is a good thing. And all plugs. Plugs. No wires. And fuses. Proper fuses. Electrical safety. Getting a bit ranty now. Sorry. Sorry.